I'm going to show you how you can use a style reference image in Alpaca to control the style of your AI art when using this powerful platform. So I'm logged into Alpaca and I'm going to show you very quickly how it works and I'm going to dive a little deeper. I'm going to hit launch now in order to get started. But also Alpaca are actually sponsoring this video and there's a link in the description if you want to check it out. For the sake of the video, I'm going to use an Alpaca input example just to get started. So I'm going to click on the little light bulb over here, pop this knight on here. You might have seen him before. And to start off, I'm going to essentially just use the default settings to generate the image based off the input example. And you can see we get this cool image, which is very similar to the input. But what if we want to add a completely different style? I'm going to use this image, which I got from pexels.com, a royalty free image as our style reference to see what kind of image we get. So the way it works is down next to your prompt, there's like a little paint palette icon. I click on that and I can click here to upload a style reference image. See, we've got two here. I'm going to click on this one, hit open, and it will upload the image. And if you want to get an even better result, you can add more images. If you have a pro account, I'm currently just using the free account, but we've got a default strength of 60 at the moment on this account here. I'm going to hit generate and we can see what this image looks like. So let's generate and compare it to what we're about to get. Now see how it's changed, the color, the background, and even some of the hair to kind of match our input image. I'm gonna bring these up side by side, so go through it with the original compared to the new one. And you can see our input image was this guy here, but adding that image has really changed the overall style of the output. But coming back, what happens if we take this style reference, which if it's turned on, you'll see a little yellow dot. Let's see how it looks if we bring it up to say 80 and reference that a little bit more. You can see it's referenced the hand in the photo as well as the hand over here. So there is a bit of a, a tipping point where maybe you get some unwanted artifacts, but that's okay. You can simply readjust, bring it down to about 70 and we're looking a bit better. You can see how powerful that feature is. And of course, if you wanted to go even lower than 60 and get more of a mild result, we can go down to say 30 so you can see it's much closer to our original. But pop it side by side and you'll notice it's been tinted slightly in the direction of the image. So you can use it even for subtle adjustments, not just complete style transfers. So being able to play with that little adjustment to see what results you get, we'll try 45 this time, can be a great way to control how much input the style has over your image. So you can see here, this looks quite close to our original, but the face is still there. We still have that little bit of a pink glow and it's really done a good job of finding a halfway point between those two styles. So that's a pretty cool function to play with and I highly recommend experimenting with it a little bit. But let's not forget what else we can do here. We don't just have to rely on the style reference. We can always go back to our prompt and our presets and change any of the settings we want to. For example, where there's a castle in the background, maybe I change that to neon lights in the city and then I add at the end, cyberpunk. So reinforcing our style with our prompt can now take it to another level. So if I hit generate, now we've been able to take it to the next level. And we can still maintain some of that style image even by changing some of these words. If I remove cyberpunk, we still get the colors. We get a little less of that cyberpunk style. If I get rid of neon and just have lights in the city, we get rid of the lights on the armor. And we manage to keep some of that city in the background. So by experimenting with the prompt a little bit, we can further change what we have with our character. Even to the point where at the moment, this guy has brown hair, we've got blonde hair. If I type in brown hair, his hair goes brown. This is a really powerful tool that allows you to take the properties of one image and apply them to your AI art. And then you can use your prompt to make adjustments to those properties and really fine tune what it is you're after. But since we're talking about fine tuning and controls, what about some of the other controls that we've used in the past, such as our presets? So let's move on to Pro and let's create an image for each profile using this prompt. And you can see from pro to control to creative how that style slowly starts to become more apparent. When we move to wild, it actually has a larger influence on the image than what we had before. This is interesting because it means that as we move up to say something like wild, we can actually use our style reference to influence a few more elements in that image, including things like pose. If I compare wild to the reference image, you'll see just how much closer it is compared to the pose we have from the original. So if I change the style reference, but keep the wild setting, 
Not only does it place the hand next to his face and give him hair similar to the subject, but even the diagonal lights seem to appear on his shirt, armor, and it seems to match up pretty closely. So now let's try something a little bit different. We have our car here, which is one of the input examples you get when you go first go into Alpaca, and we're gonna go into our style reference. I'm gonna drag in this neon image again. I'm gonna bring it back to about 50, and I'm just gonna come down and generate to see what results we get. And we get this car here. I'm going to import that car, but before we go ahead and do any more, I've got him imported. I'm going to grab my generation mask. I'm going to select part of the car, but not the whole car. Come down to our style reference, remove this image, and place another of this rusty truck. So you see we've got this rusty truck photo here. I'm actually going to bring the prompt strength up a little bit because I do want it to sort of really find that detail and add it in. I hit generate with generation mask and see how it's added rust to the car. I can go back in, crank it up even more if I really want it to be strong. And we've been able to rust up part of that car. And again, if I choose another style, come down, remove the truck, drag in this colorful paint photo. I'm gonna keep that there. I'm gonna import our rusty car image where part of it's rusty, part of it isn't. Grab my generative mask again. You can also clear it if it's still showing and I can select so the door, maybe I decide I want to redo some of this. I make sure my style setting is nice and high. I hit submit and notice how I've been able to introduce multiple styles into this image. And then I can just import the whole thing again. Simply leave this the way it is, go to pro and even just work in iterations and have fun based off this initial image. Really take it down the rabbit hole because I've kept this on. It's now applied it to sort of more of the whole image. So you can use this with generation mask as well and apply it to different areas of your image. If you have multiple styles you want to add within an image and certain elements, you can really take control of every tiny little piece of your AI art using Alpaca. So like I normally do with this stuff, I threw a whole bunch of images and styles at this and I really liked the results. Some affected the photo, some changed the style dramatically, which I thought was really cool. And I used the creative setting on this and a strength of 73 on the style reference for every single image with the exact same prompt as the sort of the input example. So it shows you just how powerful it is with almost default settings and just a little bit of extra strength added in there. But overall, very powerful and a lot of fun to play with. I want to thank Alpaca for sponsoring this video. So if you want to check this out, head to the link in the description, have a play and let me know what you think. Otherwise, have a great day. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you again next time.